of hearing my North Carolina accent for the last time. <laughs> the next time I present, I'll have been in Miami more than a week, and it will be gone. Because after one week, when I called my wife, I couldn't believe the way she talked. <laughs> So I'm currently at Miami Children's in Miami, even though my tag says Miami Children's in Durham. Um, it's in Miami. And I am going to debate one of my closest friends and colleagues, Dr. Amin, and I hope he goes easy on me, um, the small ASD with adequate rim tissue. Most of you probably know that I would use the Gore device because I've had this debate, I think, with many of you on the side. My financial and affiliations need to be disclosed, and that is I am a consultant for Gore, and I'm a national PI for the reduced trial. But I'm not biased in any way, hopefully. The first thing we have to define is what a small ASD is, and no one in this room knows because it's not ever really defined. And do you call it small or moderate or large or whatever you want to call it? So however Dr. Amin decides to call it, we'll see. But the way I called it was about 5 to 15 is considered small. And the Gore device really is only made to close small to moderate ASDs. It's not going to close anything really bigger than 18, but it, I've closed them up to about 22, and, and there was a 24 in the feasibility study. But most of the time, it's for small to moderate defects, but we're only going to talk about the small ASD. And the suspects in question are the Gore device for small ASD would be the 15, 20, 25, and 30. And then the amplaster device, which would be you know, even numbers starting at four to about 18, and then a few cribriforms in case there's a fenestration. And the reasons that I would use the Gore device are copious, but we're gonna go through those. First of all, when I measure it, and it measures 12 millimeters, I know that I can close it with the Gore device, because if I can get a two to one ratio, um, the likelihood of embolization, the likelihood of residual leak, is very low, and in the entire clinical trials, if there was more than a two to one ratio, there were no embolizations. I also know uh, that the late follow-up will be good as well, but that's just my experience, we'll see. Um, my experience has been on average floor time about eight minutes. All the patients go home by the next day. Recovery is about two weeks, maybe four, to prevent them from doing really heavy activities or heavy exercise. And the mortality and major adverse events are extremely low. In the post-approval study, which is not my data, this is the five-year follow-up that was presented at the FDA. Um, the post-approval study is finished and rolling, but they're still collecting data till probably next fall, until they have all of the five-year follow-up. But if you look at two to five-year follow-up, uh, what kind of things you know, patients maybe have had, it's about 1.4% are having a frame fracture, uh, less than 1% are having significant leak, and less than 1% are having device removal. And the bottom 